Good morning, everybody. I am uh, broadcasting from the balcony of my apartment building. And um, so I get a quasi day off as I'm preparing my sermon for our online worship tomorrow at 10 a.m. We will be online at the Episcopal Church of St. John the Baptist, Orlando, Florida, YouTube. So please subscribe to that and check that out as we will be uh, live streaming our services. Also, clips of that sermon will be on Facebook, just like I'm posting every day. Uh, for today's meditation, I want to uh, talk about Mark chapter 7. And in Mark chapter 7, the Pharisees and other religious leaders are pointing out that the apostles, the disciples, are eating with unclean hands. Meaning, not that they didn't wash their hands, is that they did not do the ritual cleansing of their hands. Sometimes they would wash up to seven times, and maybe in our day and age with this coronavirus crisis, it might do us well to wash our hands seven times. But in this text, it is not only about the washing of the hands, but it's also about washing some pots and pans and making things that are making sure that things are thoroughly clean because the Pharisees uh, lived their life like the temple. So in the temple, things had to be clean before they were offered to God. And so they would clean themselves and clean pots and pans and only eat clean food. And so Jesus makes a point to them that, uh, that they bind the word of God and live by their human traditions. And what he means by that is that you so easily point out this sin and that sin, and you're so easily pointing out how people are not doing this and that and being the morality police, and yet you are not mindful of your own hearts. Jesus says to them that it's not what it's not the unclean food that makes you unclean, eating food such as in those days, eating Pork, because pork was considered unclean. It's not about eating unclean foods, but it's about what's in your heart. So Jesus was saying, here you are, you eat unclean foods, you wash your hands thoroughly, and you clean the house uh, uh, sparkling. And yet the inside of your heart is wicked. The inside of your heart brings about all kinds of treachery and betrayal and greed and, 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 and pride. And these things just spew out on other people. They vomit out on other people. And so we got to be very careful in this coronavirus crisis to be mindful and tend to our heart. What is in our heart? And sometimes being in self-quarantine and self-isolation, those things creep up out of us. Those things that we thought we had taken care of, those things that we thought we have processed have been triggered. And so the things of the past spew out and the brokenness that is inside of us, we use to cut one another and cut ourselves. So this coronavirus crisis is revealing the secrets of our hearts. And so we need to... In this time of self-quarantine, reflect and be mindful of the triggers that will come upon us and, 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 and bring these things to the forefront. I think the wisdom of Jesus comes in very handy here because he talks about that which comes out of our hearts. What is in your heart? What is in my heart? I think this coronavirus crisis has revealed to us what is in the hearts of our society and our systems, both good and bad. In the good sense, it has revealed uh, folks helping one another, folks making sure that they are making sure that our elderly are taken care of or making sure that those who have lost their jobs are taken care of and reaching out to people, making sure that even when we are supposed to be self-quarantined, that we are still being social by technological means. And so it has revealed the good things of our hearts, but it has also revealed the bad things of our heart where our economic system that is based on greed, uh, such as our uh, hospitality industry inviting uh, their workers to clean the restaurant, to make sure that it is sparkling clean and sanitized, and yet afterwards fires them on the spot, lays them off on the spot without any recourse. We also have 
systems that have exploited our brothers and sisters, that have, have exploited us and turned us against God and turned us against one another in desperation. People feel powerless right now in their situation because they don't know where their next uh, paycheck is going to come through unemployment or their next meal on the table. And so Jesus is saying that it is these things that come out of our heart that vomit out and when what happens is that it that we it comes out of our heart and vomits on other people and so we've got to tend to our heart in this season of isolation and this season of self-containment and, and deal with those things it is funny that we've all commented that this coronavirus crisis has come in the season of lent where we um where we reflect on our lives and where we need to repent where we need to allow God by his Holy Spirit to bring conversion and change and transformation. And so we need in this time of reflection, not only tend to, tend to our own hearts to make sure that we are patient and kind and loving with one another and speaking those things to one another, especially when you're in close quarters with one another, but also we need to reflect on our systems and how this plague has exposed the systems that are not right. Those systems that uh, exploit people and the economic crisis that we are going to be in after this coronavirus is long gone. What good is it for us? To survive this coronavirus crisis, but not be cleansed from the corruption that has uh, so easily plagued us when there was no virus to make us sick. It, it what is what this coronavirus crisis is revealing is the cancer of sin, the cancer of systems that oppress. Uh, people, the systems that enslave people and then causes us out of desperation to enslave one another. So we as the church and we as nonprofits and we at places of worship need to stand strong and speak a word, a prophetic word in this season against the principalities and powers that are enslaving our brothers and sisters. We need to go to the heart of the matter instead of pointing out certain sins. It is funny that the morality police of our days love to point out this sin or that sin and yet don't want to talk about the corruption they support in our political and economic system. And the Bible has more to talk about poverty and, and, and taking care of the poor and the widow and the oppressed than other sins that we like to make a big deal about. And so the heart of the gospel and the heart of the matter is, is that we need to tend to our own lives we need to tend to what is going on inside of us so that our own brokenness don't cut one another or cut ourselves through our addiction. And then we need to tend to the systems and challenge that they be changed because they have been exposed for the frauds and idols that they have been not only in the religious system that Jesus was talking about of his day, but the religious system of our day and the political and social economic system of our day. I hope that in, in this time that we can realize that those things that are taboo can be transformed. Those things that are considered unclean can be become clean. And those things that destroy our human nature, those things that cause us to destroy other people can also be cast out. Because perfect love cast out fear and we journey on the way of Jesus, the way of love that cast out fear. So we as Christians and we as people of faith need to be the voice crying in the wilderness saying we can clean our houses. We can clean our places of business. But if we don't clean out the corruption that enslaves our brothers and sisters, we're still going to be in a crisis. But it is going to be a crisis that will uh, literally destroy us if we don't deal with it. So I just want to say that we love you at the Episcopal Church of St. John the Baptist. I love you and we are praying for you. Thank you and God bless.